Hello, in this video we will continue our discussion of market analysis by finding the new market equilibrium points following real world changes in the market. Specifically what we'll be doing is finding new price and quantity equilibrium points following a market change using real world scenarios. Now what this means is we're going to take the information we found in our previous tutorial on where we just changed one thing and we'll see as I said we, we weren't uh, we weren't going to calculate or locate the new market equilibrium point in that previous video that was I have to keep things discrete stepwise and simple so first we have the market change and we'll model that and now in this video we're going to bring the market back into equilibrium following the market change. And we're actually going to be using the same we're going to be using the same exact uh, worksheet set that we used in the first video. So we'll take a look at that. Let me clear the deck and we'll begin our work. Okay, so you see here these are this is the scenario this is scenario number one from the first worksheet and in scenario number one we are given that the market ch uh, change that occurred is given by the scenario Waterburger installs a robot to make chicken sandwiches it says it right here Whataburger installs a robot to make chicken sandwiches, which reduces production cost by $1 per sandwich. So if, if you just watched the previous video or you have your worksheet in front of you, that resulted in a new quantity supplied of 3.25 million sandwiches. The quantity demanded did not change. The price did not change. And we had a surplus of 750,000 sandwiches. But that was a temporary sort of intermediate step now we need to shift the whole market needs to establish a new equilibrium point you have to imagine that the tendency for the markets is always to seek equilibrium it's kind of like a a a, a, a basketball bouncing will it will find equilibrium there back on the ground eventually okay so a a a ping pong ball bouncing back and forth in a in a in a uh, a game will eventually come to rest so the the whole point is once we once we have market shifts there will come to there will come to be a point where the market finds a new equilibrium so I'm going to use if I can a color that I haven't used in the other um, in all the other examples so it, it stays it's, it's, it's clear that I'm, I'm, I'm going to be adding information to these graphs. I don't want to confuse you. So I'll, I guess I'll try to use colors that, depending on the graph, I'll use a different color to find the new equilibrium point. Now, in order to do this assignment, you have to add two new columns. Okay? So I'll show you the columns that you have to add. Extend out your worksheet to the end of the page like that. And then you're going to add two new columns. And the columns uh, make make a column like this. Those two new columns are going to be called uh, new price equilibrium, okay, or new P sub E, and new quantity equilibrium, or Q sub E. Now you'll see a correlation here in a second, but for now we'll just we'll, we'll we're going to find the new um, essentially the new coordinates of the market equilibrium for each of these scenarios. And we're going to go through this fairly quickly because I will assume that you have just watched that hour and a half long tutorial. If you need to refer back to that, please refer back to that. We'll call that part one. This is part two. Really, you can't say that you're doing market analysis until you've done both parts one and part two. So we'll do part two now. Okay, so we had this shift. The supply curve shifted to the right. So supply increased. 
Well, we had kept everything ceteris paribus, or all else being equal, in the previous tutorial. Now we're going to change the other parameters of the market to see where the new equilibrium point is. All right, so we had this shift. It might help to have um, <clears throat> some lentils here to, to move things around. So what's going on? Well, the supply shifted. So what's going to have to happen for there to be a new market equilibrium is demand is going to have to change as well. So what's going to happen to demand is that uh, demand is going to, to shift in order to make a new equilibrium point. All right, so the new uh, demand equilibrium will will shift to the supply equilibrium, and you'll you but you'll have a change in price and a change in quantity. So let's think about this for just a minute. What happened? Waterburger installs a new robot to make chicken sandwiches, which reduces production cost by one dollar per sandwich. Um, so we said that supply increased because the price of making the sandwich dropped. And so we just assumed that the producer took advantage of the price drop in the cost. We lowered the break-even uh, cost right there. And then the market, the supply curve shifted. And we said that, the, that there wasn't really a change in demand, but there will be a change in the quantity demanded, okay, and the price uh, that is that is that customers are willing to pay. So here's what happens: as the supply curve shifted to the right, uh, to that new quantity supplied, there is going to be a corresponding shift. There's going to be a corresponding movement, rather, in the price customers are willing to pay and the uh, the quantity that they're willing to purchase. So right now, customers at the drive-through window at Waterburger are buying 2.5 million sandwiches at $9 a sandwich. All right. Once this thing takes place, this scenario of the robot being installed, this lentil is going to move down the demand curve until it meets the new supply curve. So that's my new equilibrium point where that lentil is right there. So let's actually draw that in and see what uh, what values we get for price and quantity. So what we're looking for is this point right here where they meet. So um, I'm actually not convinced that that's going to work. So I want to use a different color, a bright color. I guess we'll use we'll try to use uh, this. It looks blue to you, but it looks purple to me. We'll see if this works. I might change this. So <clears throat> there's my intersection point right there. Right, before I do anything else, I'm going to label this. Um, this is going to be the new equilibrium, or we'll say equilibrium. Um, I guess I should have called this equilibrium zero or equal, equilibrium initial state. This is going to be the equilibrium for scenario one, the new equilibrium. All right. So here's the new equilibrium. We put a dot, dot, dot from the intersection point out to the price line and see what we read. And what I'm reading is something between $8 and $8.50. I can't tell exactly what it is. So I'm going to split the difference and say that price, I'll change this to zero, okay, just to make it clear. Price equilibrium one for scenario one is equal to $8.25. So the price equilibrium dropped. The price customers are paying and the price that's on the menu will drop. And the quantity went up okay it didn't go up all the way here to QS1 it went up to this new quantity equilibrium which I'll, I'll make a little line over here because you can't fit it all in there that new quantity equilibrium is right there between 2.75 and 3 so I, I don't know 2.85 uh, million we'll say that quantity equilibrium for the first scenario is equal to 2.85 million sandwiches. All right. So down here in my table, I just need to enter those values. 
where it says the new price equilibrium is eight dollars and twenty five cents I'll put here eight point two five and the new quantity equilibrium is two point eight five million two point eight five million so do you see our our quantity supplied there jumped up to three point two five but our actual when it finally came to rest in the new equilibrium point the price fell and the quantity equilibrium rose all right so we'll talk about in a future lecture we'll, we'll start to analyze whether it was a good idea to get the robot or not uh, by looking at total revenue and total cost and all those other cool things but right now let's just learn how to find these new points this we have to do these in steps guys so we're taking the second step here is finding the new equilibrium for the market so this is the equilibrium for the market for scenario one and the equilibrium points are uh, the x-axis or quantity axis is 2.85 million the y-axis or price axis is eight dollars and 25 cents right okay that's scenario one so we've now done the change in market equilibrium for scenario one let's move on to scenario two okay in this scenario it says down here that the price of Whataburger's patty melt sandwich that was a substitute good increases causing demand for the honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich to increase by 1.75 million sandwiches so in this example we had not a supply shift but a demand shift demand shifted to the right demand shifted this way right so the question is what happens to the market equilibrium well in this case let's put our our dot back here at the market equilibrium what's going to happen is that the this time the the little lentil will travel along the supply curve until it gets to the new market equilibrium point because supply did not change so now that is my new market equilibrium so we'll call this equilibrium two okay so that's equilibrium two and we'll circle it in this is it right here equilibrium two and we need to find out what the price and quantity equilibrium are in this example so find your straight edge and dot 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 out to the y-axis or the price axis and that is darn close but not quite to ten dollars and fifty cents we'll call it ten dollars and forty cents if you see something else you can put that but I'm going to say that price equilibrium for scenario two is equal to ten dollars and uh, forty cents okay what is the quantity equilibrium for the new market equilibrium well we'll drop down our vertical axis and we'll see that the quantity equilibrium for scenario two is equal to between 3.5 and 3.75 halfway between or about halfway between so I'll say 3.6 million so the quantity equilibrium is 3.6 million so now that we found our new values we'll go down here to our table and we have to add in these new columns um, we'll call this we're just working on scenario number two this time so I'll call this uh, new price equilibrium and new quantity equilibrium and what I've got for price is ten dollars and forty cents and for quantity I've got 3.6 million sandwiches. Oops, I wrote three dollars and say 3.6 million sandwiches. All right, so that's what you do to find the new market equilibrium point for scenario two. All right, the price of Waterburger's patty melt sandwich, a substitute, increased. 
So the price of a substitute increased. That made the relative price or the relative attractiveness of the honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich increase because if something else on the menu gets more expensive, it, there's kind of a flight or people run away from that menu item and go toward the relatively cheaper item. Um, but once the market for the honey barbecue chicken strip sandwiches sandwich uh, finds a new equilibrium point, we see that the effect of increasing the price of the patty melt substitute was that the price of the honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich went up from 9 to 1040 so there was an increase in price of a dollar 40 and there was also an increase in the quantity from 2.5 million to 3.6 million okay because demand went up so these are our new values for scenario two. And this is the market equilibrium for scenario two. Now on to scenario three. Really, I want you to work quickly through these and just learn how to find equilibrium points in order to um, reconcile those shortages and surpluses uh, quickly. And then we'll calculate whether these were good decisions or bad decisions or bad changes or good changes in a later tutorial. All right, now we're looking at scenario number three, and uh, let's read that scenario. The price or cost of chicken increases, causing output to drop by 750,000 sandwiches. So this was actually a decrease in supply. Supply shifted, in this example, supply shifted to the left, or it, it was reduced. It was reduced. Okay, but we didn't yet find the new market equilibrium point. Well, let's take one of our lentils. We'll put it back on the equilibrium. And since supply was the one that shifted, we have to move this lentil along the demand curve until it meets the, the new point uh, on the supply curve. So there it is right there. That's where supply and demand meet now. So what you do is you take your uh, marker and we'll call this point right here, the equilibrium for scenario three. So what is the new price equilibrium? Well, you take a dot, dot, dot out to your price axis, and it's between $9.50 and $10, but it's close to $9.50, so I'll say that it's $9.60. That's the new price equilibrium. And the quantity equilibrium is right here. We drop down here. And again, I'll make a little line because I can't see that point. And that quantity equilibrium for scenario uh, three is equal to, it's very close to 2.25 million. I'll say that it's equal to 2.2 million. That's what it looks like to me, 2.2 million sandwiches. Okay, so what happened here? The price of chicken went up, so the cost increased. There was a contraction in supply, and that caused the price to rise, okay, uh, because the, the resource is now more scarce, and it caused the, quantities, uh, the, the, the quantity to drop, okay, the quantity demanded to drop as well. So the new equilibrium price and quantity is right here. So let's indicate that on our chart by taking out our new columns and we'll put new price here. This is the new price equilibrium here and this is the new quantity equilibrium right here. So for scenario number three, those values were located at the price of $9.60 right here, $9.60, and a quantity of 2.2 million, 2.2 million. Okay, so that was scenario three. Let's look at scenario four. This is our graph. In scenario four, it says a food virus is discovered in Whataburger's lettuce, causing customer traffic to drop by 45%. So customer traffic dropping by 45% represented 
as we found in the previous tutorial, a decrease in demand. The demand curve shifted to the left, just like this. Demand shifted to the left. But we didn't calculate the new market equilibrium. So let's do that now. Since demand is the curve that shifted, we have to travel along our supply curve with our lentil until we find the new equilibrium point where demand and supply equal. Okay, and that's going to be right there. So it is useful to have something like a lentil. I prefer lentils for uh, one very particular reason, but uh, it's also a very healthy vegetable, uh, legume. But you can use anything you want. I use lentils. So this is the new market equilibrium for scenario four. So this is the equilibrium for scenario four right there. Well, what are the values associated with the new equilibrium? Here's what they are. We'll place dot, dot, dot out to the uh, price axis, and that is just above $8. We'll call it $8.10. This is the price equilibrium for scenario four, $8.10. Your value might be a little bit different depending on the thickness of your marker. And uh, finally, it looks like I found uh, that we're going to have a point lie right on a, a, a dot. So the quantity equilibrium, uh, I'll just make a little line out here. That quantity equilibrium point is the quantity equilibrium for scenario four is equal to 1.75 million sandwiches. Okay, so let's take a look at what happened again. A food virus is discovered in Whataburger's lettuce, causing customer traffic to drop by 45%. So we modeled that initial thing and held everything else equal in the first tutorial. Now we're seeing kind of the after effects of the changes in the market. So what happened when the food virus was discovered, ultimately, is that the price of the honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich dropped by 80 cents or 90 cents from $9 to $8.10. And the quantity dropped from 2.5 million down to 1.75 million, ultimately. So there was first, there was that huge contraction in supply. And then when the market found equilibrium, it, it, it honed in on 1.75 million. Okay, so here's your quantity equilibrium and your price equilibrium and your market equilibrium. Those are your three key points. Well, let's go ahead and fill in our table and move on to the next scenario. So here is our table, and um, we have, this is the new uh, price equilibrium and the new quantity equilibrium. And what those are, according to our analysis, is about $8.10 here. So this is $8.10. And the quantity equilibrium is 1.75 million, 1.75 million. So that's scenario four. Good job. So you've done, you finally reconciled the market for scenario four. Let's move on to scenario five. This one presents us with a different situation. So this is something where there's a real problem. Um, and we'll talk about why. So what happens in scenario five? Waterburger runs a sale on the honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich, dropping the price by $2 per sandwich. So this time we had a change in the price. Okay, uh, it was imposed from the outside, and it caused, this time I need two lentils, it caused, um, there wasn't like a change in supply or demand, but there was a change in the price. The price went down due to the sale. And so the both the price and quantity uh, per, both the pardon me both the quantity supplied and quantity demanded shifted at the same or uh, neither the price neither the supply curve nor the demand curve itself shifted. Total supply stayed the same and the demand curve stayed the same, but the quantities kind of split. So we have to ask ourselves what is the new market equilibrium here?
because this problem is a little bit different than the problem we calculated before or those previous problems. Where is the new equilibrium? Well, I'm, I'm being silent because we have a problem. There's a, <clears throat> there's a, like a, an imbalance in the market. So it's like, well, do I, I, I don't have any curve shifts. So where do I draw my new equilibrium point? Well, that's why we call this a shortage. So there's a shortage problem here. There is no market equilibrium here. The new market equilibrium point, when you just change the price, and this is really called like we're I'm modeling what's called like a price control. And this one right here would be called a price ceiling. This is an example of a price ceiling. All right. So there is a uh, there's a there's an imbalance in the market. Uh, we'll talk more about these price controls in a later tutorial, but there's an imbalance in the market. Something's going to have to happen. Um, what is likely going to happen if I'm a business owner and people are demanding more sandwiches, I'm probably going to um, increase my supply to meet their demand. But we're not given that in this problem. So for scenario five, for now, I don't want you to compute a new market equilibrium. For now, we will just say um, we'll just say that that this problem, this particular problem, there's something else we need to learn before we compute market equilibrium. So skip five for now. Let's look at number six. Here we've got kind of the opposite problem. Waterburger increases the price of all its menu items by 15% due to rising employment costs. So we're not saying that they're shifting their supply at all. We're saying that they just increase the price. And what I'm again trying to model is a, a price control. So this price control is called a price floor. And I'm just kind of previewing this for you. But do you see the problem? When we try to do our, our, our lentil analysis, we don't have any curve shifting going on. So, uh, we move the quantity supplied and quantity demanded out, and we see that quantity demanded dropped and quantity supplied increased, but we don't have any shifts in the total demand or total supply. We just have this divergence. So this is called the surplus. Now we were calculating shortages and surpluses in scenarios one through four, but we reconciled them when we found the new equilibrium point. So just like this, this is again a preview video. There's something else going on that we need to learn about before we find the market equilibrium. So skip six for uh, six for now. So now we are going to uh, end our tutorial on market equilibrium changes with uh, scenario number seven, and this gets us back into what we know how to do: drive-through traffic. Here's the graph, by the way. Drive-through traffic accounts for 60% of all sales. The drive-through lanes are shut down for maintenance. Drive-through customers choose other fast food restaurants instead of coming inside. Well, we, we did all the work here, and we modeled that what that indicated was that there was a decrease in demand. So the demand curve shifted, in this case, to the left. It, it went down. Demand went down. So what happens to the market equilibrium? Well, in this case, we're back into territory that we understand. We just shift the lentil along the supply curve until it, it finds the new demand curve. And this becomes the new market equilibrium point. So this is the equilibrium point for the seventh scenario. Equilibrium seven is right there. So color that in. And we'll find the new price and quantity equilibrium. So the price equilibrium is right here. It's just below $8. I'll say that it's $7.85. Again, your value may be different. This is going to be the price equilibrium for scenario 7. $7.85. My quantity equilibrium looks like it's just above $1.5 million. Maybe it's 1.6 million, so I'll just draw a little line here. My quantity equilibrium for scenario 7 is equal to something like 1.6 million. I don't know. It's, it's whatever you think, 1.6 million. 
So we did find a new market equilibrium point right here. We found a new price equilibrium point here with uh, 785, and we found a new quantity equilibrium with 1.6 million sandwiches. So let's look at what happened again. There was a decrease in demand because the drive-through lanes were shut down. And the net effect of that is that the price of the honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich fell and the quantity in the market of the honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich both supplied and demanded fell as well so um, let's just fill in our table and then we'll do a, like a run through of all of them to uh, look at the analysis just so you understand what I'm talking about so this is like the new price equilibrium right here and this is the new quantity equilibrium right here well the new price equilibrium we found was 785 785 okay and the new quantity equilibrium was 1.6 million sandwiches so this is 1.6 million sandwiches okay so that's scenario 7 check that off so now we did find new market equilibrium here that worked out really well so now that you've completed all seven scenarios uh, we can look at each one again and just make sure we understand what happened. <clears throat> okay, so here's my graph for scenario one. To review, Whataburger installed a robot. That's a technological improvement. The cost of producing the sandwich went down, so the supply of the sandwich increased. The total supply curve in shifted to the right. There was a supply shift. And once we found the new equilibrium point, we saw that the technological increase caused a drop uh, in the price that both the buyer and the seller are willing to exchange at. The, the point where the buyer and the seller, if you're negotiating, you say, hey, I'll pay you $5,000 for the car. And the car salesman says, uh, you know, look, the sticker price is 6000 So the, the he says, I'll meet you halfway at, at, at $5,500. And the buyer says, no, how about fifty? It's like a negotiation goes on, $5,250. And they end up somewhere in the middle. Well, that's what's going on here. We have uh, the, the negotiation between the consumer and the producer. And the ultimate negotiation ends up that, hey, look, we'll lower the price of the honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich by 75 cents down to eight dollars and 25 cents and as a result you uh, the people will buy more of them they'll meet them about halfway there and they'll buy 2.85 million so the original was 2.5 million so there was an increase of 350,000 sandwiches that was the uh, the increase when the market finally found new equilibrium so that's how you interpret graph one. Graph two, or scenario two, is that the price of the substitute, the patty melt sandwich, increased, causing demand for the honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich to increase by 1.75 million. Okay, so the demand went up. The demand went up. And so let's see what the negotiation that happened between buyer and seller. The demand went up. So the people, the customers were willing to pay more. Customers are willing to pay more now. Well, how much more? Well, they're willing to pay 10, 40 minus nine, or they're willing to pay a dollar 40 more for the sandwich. That was kind of like the change in the price, a dollar 40 more. Um, the change in the price equilibriums, I should say. So the Sellers say, okay, we'll, we'll increase the price. We're happy to make more money. And the, the buyers say, well, we're happy to pay $1.40 more. Thank you very much. And so when, in this case, the, when the price of the patty melt went up, it made this honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich just more attractive. And so the quantity increased here to 3.6 from 2.5. So let's say the change in the quantity equilibrium for this example was 3.6 minus 2.5 equals 1.1 million sandwiches. So there was an increase in the quantity of 1.1 million in these equilibriums. So 
the price went up by a dollar forty, the quantity equilibrium went up by one point one million, and we reflected those down here with the the new price and quantity equilibriums. Okay, so that's what happens when the price of substitute goods go up, then the price of the original good goes up and the quantity of the original good goes up too. So we'll, we'll talk about inflation later, but for now we'll just leave that. Now we'll go to scenario three. Here we have a situation where the cost of one of the inputs on the production side increased. So one of the production costs went up. That was the price of a raw material went up. So the uh, output of the chicken dropped. There was a contraction in supply. The supply curve shifted to the left. And what happened between buyer and seller is that the buyer and seller came together and said, look, you are restricting the supply of honey barbecue chicken strip sandwiches. So as a buyer, I'm willing to pay more because there's less in the market. Okay, I understand the, the price of chicken went up, so I've got to pay a little bit more, right? Probably not as much as the seller would like. I mean, the seller probably would have liked if they could charge ten fifty this for a sandwich. But the negotiation centered around this this nine dollar and sixty cent amount. So look what happened to the quantity. The quantity dropped from two point five million to two point two million. So because the price of chicken went up, here was the change in price uh, equilibrium was that it went up by 60 cents, okay, or 0 0.6 dollars, 0 0.6 dollars went up. The change in the quantity equilibrium was uh, 2.5 million down to 2.2 million, or a change of 300,000 sandwiches, a decrease of 300,000 sandwiches, okay? That was the change in the quantity equilibrium. So when the price of in when the price of a production input like a raw material goes up, we see that the menu price goes up a little bit, but the supply goes down. Uh, the the quantity equal sorry the quantity equilibrium goes down. So that's uh, to keep in mind there. Now uh, scenario number four, in this one it says a food virus is discovered causing customer traffic or demand to drop by 45 percent. So we modeled that here with a demand curve shift to the left. So what was the negotiation going on? You can just imagine this happening in the stores. The Whataburger customers are saying, look, man, you've got food viruses, so we're not willing to pay as much. So you got to lower your price. And the supplier goes, says, yes, OK, OK, I'll lower my price. Um, and in fact, it's bad on all accounts because even with the lower price, the customers still didn't demand as much as they did before, so the quantity equilibrium dropped as well. So our new quantity, our new or change in the price equilibrium, okay, is that it dropped by 90 cents per per sandwich, 0.9 dollars per sandwich. So we'll talk about how this affects revenue and cost in a later tutorial, but we'll just say for now that that is in fact what happened. And the, over here, the change in the quantity equilibrium, well, the first one was 2.5 million. And this quantity equilibrium is 1.75 million, so 1.75. Oh, well, it looks like that the quantity equilibrium change is that quantity equilibrium dropped by uh, 0.75 or 750,000 sandwiches, 0.75 million sandwiches. Okay. So when a food virus breaks out, price goes down and quantity goes down as well. Okay, this was one that we're going to skip for now. This is scenario six. We're going to skip this one as well. Now let's look at scenario seven to finish it off. drive through traffic accounts for 60% of all sales. The drive through lanes are shut down for maintenance. Drive through customers choose other fast food restaurants. So there was a decrease in demand. We modeled that by shifting the demand curve to the left. We found the new equilibrium point. So here's what customers did, and here's how the suppliers reacted when the drive through lanes were shut. 
they said, look, man, your drive through lanes are shut, so you need to lower your price on the sandwich from $9 to $7.85. So the change in the price equilibrium, what buyers and sellers are willing to agree upon, is $9 minus $7.85. Okay, so that is a change, that is a decrease of $1.15 per sandwich. Okay, $9 down to 785 the price decreased by a dollar 15 that was the change in the price equilibrium how about the quantity equilibrium uh, I'm running out of space let me do my quantity equilibrium analysis right over here so my initial quantity my quantity equilibrium was uh, so this is the change in the quantity equilibrium so my initial quantity equilibrium was 2.5 million my new quantity equilibrium is equal to 1.6 million. So what's the change? Well, the change is uh, 0.9 million sandwiches. Uh, 2.5 down to 1.6. The change is a decrease of 900,000 sandwiches. So if you're looking, if you're looking at this, there was both of these go down. The price went down and the quantity went down. All right. So what happened here? Drive through traffic. So demand decreased. So when demand decreased, the price decreased and the quantity decreased. All right. So I just went to that was all seven scenarios very quickly. So just to do a final check in a technological improvement situation in scenario one. All right. What happened was that the price went down okay and the quantity supplied went up okay so this is like a technology shift so technological technological improvement causes price to drop and quantity to rise. Okay, well that makes sense. We can make more things cheap more cheaply. That's how technology works. That was the kind of big lesson to take away from scenario one. Scenario two says that a substitute good got more expensive, making the honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich, relatively speaking, more attractive. So when a substitute good, so this is the big takeaway here is a substitute good substitute goes a price of a substitute goes up then the price and the quantity so price goes up of the honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich and the quantity goes up for the honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich that's what we modeled with the substitute good price increasing and we'll talk about whether that's a good thing or a bad thing when we talk about inflation in scenario three we saw that the cost of chicken increased okay the price of chicken increased that caused a contraction in supply and so what happened is there were there were fewer sandwiches available to purchase so people were willing to pay more so here is when a raw materials this is the takeaway raw materials go up in expense all right the price goes up but the quantity supply the quantity goes down so raw materials cause price to increase and quantity to decrease did you notice that that is exactly the opposite of scenario one the price went down and the quantity went up with technological improvement but here with raw materials we see that price goes up and quantity goes down so when the inputs this was the input or the cost decreased in the first scenario this is number one okay in number three this is number three the cost or input went up and so this is how you I want you to compare these two scenario one and scenario three 
When there's a decrease in the cost of production, the price goes down and the quantity goes up. When there's an increase in the cost of production, the price goes up and the quantity goes down. So this is a cost decrease, this is a cost increase. And that's how those two, th two things compare. And you can see how their supply, in the first example, the supply shifted to the right. In this third example, the supply shifted to the left. So compare scenarios one and three to learn something. What about scenario four? A food virus is discovered in Whataburger's lettuce causing customer traffic to drop by 45%. We modeled that by a decrease in the supply and we saw that when, we'll just model it this way, when customer customer demand goes down, then we see that price goes down and quantity goes down. You know, another takeaway is when quality control of your food is poor, this is why it pays to have good quality control. You know, this is also a quality control issue. I mean, if they had kept their, their facilities more uh, more neat and clean, perhaps the food virus wouldn't have wouldn't have happened. Or maybe if their suppliers had been neater and cleaner, then the food virus wouldn't have happened. So quality control went down. All right, customer demand as a result decreased, and that caused a decrease in both price and quantity. Let's take a look at kind of an the, the alternative there, this is scenario number four, okay? That's scenario number four. It's interesting to compare scenario number four with scenario number two, All right? In scenario number four, demand decreased, and we saw that when demand decreased, both price and quantity went down. Here in scenario two, demand increased, and we saw that price and quantity both went up. So let's compare. When, try to get them both in frame. When there's a substitute good whose price increases, the price and quantity go up. When there is a quality control issue, the price and quantity go down. Both of those were driven by Demand, demand shifting caused that to happen. So this is three, two, one. Okay, so now let's move on. We're going to skip five and six for now and look at seven. So here in seven, I just have another demand shift. It says here that drive through traffic, the drive through lanes were closed, demand. Uh, demand went down because people abandoned the restaurant and went somewhere else to eat lunch. So we saw that when there was a, we'll call this a, you know, like the way I would refer to this is there was an interruption. Interruption in the supply chain. we see that price goes down and quantity goes down. Price goes down and quantity goes down. So if you're thinking about this from the perspective of a business owner, your supply chain management or your operations management, this is an operations problem. Operations, uh, the quality of the operations went down. Uh, sorry, I just drew an exclamation point, went down. So when the, when the operations slow down or there's a constriction in the ability of customers to get through the line, okay, you, you know this for yourself. When the line is really long, you tend to abandon the line, okay? Like if you're at Walmart and you're about to check out and you see that there is only two registers open and it's Christmas Eve and there's five billion people in line, that's when a... Uh, a lot of carts get abandoned. People just leave the store. They say, I'll just do it later. So price and quantity both decrease. That hurts. So you want to make sure that you keep your drive-through lanes open. 
and that your operations are functioning very smoothly, that your supply chain is not interrupted because that will cause a decrease in demand, okay? Customers will abandon your store, go somewhere else, and your price and quantity both decrease. Now that concludes the kind of very high level analysis of the market. So now you've completed all these steps. Okay, I'll fill in this table. But all of these steps are complete now. You found um, the effect, the initial effect of the market change, and then you found the new equilibrium. And you described the change using economic language. Okay, so that you did a very good job there. I hope you watch this video a couple of times because there was a lot of kind of higher level thinking and analytical skill that was used in this tutorial, whereas the previous tutorial was more or less just procedural. So uh, please watch this again, watch both tutorials again, and of course, as always, make sure you like and subscribe. Thank you.